So what is the point of this stream? Well, I really, there's a couple of reasons why I'm doing this stream. The first one is I really needed an opportunity to test out my new live streaming setup. I'm going to be doing a lot more live streams moving forward. It's just that I haven't really been doing it as much as I wanted to. Anyway, I don't want to go too much off on a tangent, but basically I needed to be able to test this out. Secondly, I'm in the middle of researching some stuff for a video that I'm kind of working on where I want to talk about like Web 3.0 and where I think the future of web development in general is going. And so I stumbled across this blog post and now don't get me wrong. So I, sh I should give a little bit of context. This blog post is on Webflow's website. And if you don't know what Webflow is, they're a CMS. And if you don't know what a CMS is, it's a content management system or service. I don't know. And basically the concept is you can build websites with a UI instead of learning how to code. You can kind of use a UI and also maybe even code to build a website. It makes it a lot easier to do web development. It makes it a lot more user friendly. Think Wix.com. Think, I don't know, Squarespace. Think WordPress, etc. These are all CMSs. Okay. So Webflow is a pretty advanced one and I've used it before. I actually I actually like it. It's it's a pretty good CMS. The problem is that I just stumbled across a <laughs> blog post that's a little bit whack and I just wanted to talk smack about it a little bit. So web design versus web development, neither will exist in 10 years. So right off the bat, if that's true, then web flow is going to be pointless because why develop for the web? No, I get what they're saying. Okay. They're saying that because of things like web flow and probably other products in tandem with it, the concept and the way that people think of what web development is and web design is today, th that just won't exist anymore. And instead, there's going to be you no know, new hybrid roles where basically you're going to be using a content management system alongside a little bit of JavaScript and a little bit of HTML. And don't get me wrong, those jobs already exist and they're probably going to grow. So I'm not saying that they're necessarily 100% wrong. I'm saying that this statement is very incorrect. Web design versus web development, neither will exist in 10 years is incorrect. And I'm just gonna, I haven't even read this article. I'm gonna go through this article and kind of just talk about it as I go through it. But I just wanna say like my opinion right off of, off of the bat here is that this is just absolutely whack. And Misha Vaughn, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, is the director of content. So this isn't just some random person posting a blog post on Webflow. This is the director of content posting this. So this is something that is probably company wide in their in their uh, perspective. So the future of web design versus web development is being redefined. Okay, I agree with that. I think that that is a true statement because things like web 3.0, which I'm going to be making a video on. That's the whole reason I found this article in the first place is because I'm doing that research. Web 3.0 is a thing. And things like, you know, HTTP three is, is going to be a thing soon. It's already in draft and, and tons of things are going to be different moving forward. The internet, as we know, it will change. And that is going to change people like mine, you know, a web developer is going to change our jobs and the way that we view our jobs. But anyway, 10 years from now, experts will experts in design and coding will still be in high demand. Okay. So yes, I agree with that as well, but their actual day to day tasks will look different as the no code movement, a trend of enabling non coders to build websites and software visually. So people have been saying this forever. People have been saying that forever. All of these no cool, no code tools have existed forever and it still hasn't taken over. And don't get me wrong. Again, I've used Webflow. It's pretty powerful and I've used other no code tools. It's pretty helpful. What is it? Uh, uh, not Unity Engine, the other one, um, the other big gaming engine, Unreal Engine. They have this no code tool, at least they did. That was pretty powerful and pretty fun to use. But anyway, let me click this no code movement link. What is this? Oh, another link on Webflow. Who would have guessed? <laughs> no code development, a simple guide to the no code movement. You, you can write code in Webflow. Like you can, you can be, you can use Webflow and write code using their tool. So I don't know about no code. You mean less code? Anyway, discover how no code development platforms are changing the way designers, developers, and creators are. I can't even read this, dude. Your no code tool is not working. I can't read this. <laughs> no, I just, uh, for real though, like you can't read this. Your no code tool is, is, is failing. <laughs> Anyway, um, websites and software without writing code. Get started. It's free. This isn't even a, well, it is a button, but they don't have the hover on that. Again, <laughs> I'm not here to talk this level of smack. I'm just kind of having some fun. What is no code development? So no code development is a type of web development that allows non-programmers and programmers. So both 
non-programmers and programmers, so in other words, every single person in the world, to create software using a graphical user interface instead of writing code. The no-code movement rests upon the fundamental belief that technology should enable and facilitate creation, not be a barrier to entry. Yeah, I, I can kind of see where they're coming from on that, but at the same time, if you want to create software, usually there's some sort of reason that you want to create software, right? Like maybe you're starting a business and you need a website for your business or you have an app idea and you want to make money. So you need this app to be created. There is going to be work involved for you to be able to make money. I agree that it shouldn't be like super hard for you to get a job in the future because we all know that in the future, coding jobs are probably going to be one of the major jobs that you have to get or tech jobs are going to be one of the most abundantly available jobs. And so we don't want to make it impossible for people to get jobs in the future. I get that. But at the same time, it is hard to build apps. They want to make it easier is what they're trying to say. OK, so much that we do in our day to day lives is powered by code. Whether we are checking our bank accounts, liking friends photos on social media, or are searching for new outfits on our favorite e-commerce sites, programming is what makes all of these actions possible, okay? And is also what powers your tool. Keep that in mind. For the majority of us who lack the know-how in writing code, the idea of crafting a web app or building websites seems forever out of reach. But what was once a space that only developers and those well-skilled in coding could navigate is now open to everyone. The no code movement has, is this really a movement or is this just a marketing term from Webflow? Like what is this movement? Is there people in the streets protesting? What kind of movement are we talking about here? So anyway, removed the obstacles of having to know programming languages, letting anyone bring their ideas to light. Okay. So people are pissed apparently that they can't code. So they're start, they started a movement called the no code movement and Webflow is the hero of this movement. And they are, they have come to basically save the lives of all who are pissed <laughs> where app development and launching web applications was once only possible by skilled programmers, no code development platforms, along with the wealth of tutorials out there, by the way, check out my YouTube channel, port ex. E. I make tons of tutorials. That's my plug for this wealth of tutorials out there can get anyone on their way to getting their ideas out there. Being a non programmer no longer matters. So I get the gist of what this particular thing is saying, What the no code movement is, is basically a marketing scheme by Webflow. Okay. Designers, marketers, and other professionals will be able to build simpler apps, websites, and other digital tools without writing a line of code. Developers will have, will then have more time for complex projects. So these things have existed forever. Webflow did not create this concept. This is not something that is like new. WordPress has been out forever. Wix.com has been out forever. Shopify has been a thing for quite a long time. Uh, Squarespace, etc. These are all things that have existed for a long time. But the long term effects of this dis disruption may be even more significant. We are likely to see an emergence of new roles, hybrids of what were once two separate jobs as the tools we use to accomplish web building become more efficient. Now, this is a relatively vague and interesting paragraph that I'm interested to see where, where, where this one goes. So I'll just take this one and keep going. Web design versus web development. What's the difference? So before I even read this, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you what the difference is. Web design is obviously like from a designer or an almost like an artist's perspective, maybe even a user experience perspective where you mentally have a model of what a website and a web experience should be like and you create that design, but you don't necessarily develop or create the, the architecture that it operates on. A web developer does that. A web developer can also be a web designer and a web designer could also be a web developer. And so there's already a gray line there, right? It's not, I, I've worked at like, I don't know, 10 different companies as a web developer, and I've never once worked with a dedicated web designer. There are all sorts of web developers where it's a front end developer. You might work only in C SS, which might be closer to what they're calling a web designer. That's kind of my take on the whole web designer and web development thing. It's it's more of a conceptual thing than it is actually in practice. Okay, web design is the visual look of a website and the functionality from a user's perspective. Okay, that's pretty much what I was saying. Web designers often work within the design software like Figma. So they're talking like user experience. Okay, sure. Or Adobe XD to create visually appealing user experiences. So user experience, that's the keyword UX. Then they hand those designs off to developers. Sometimes that 
that's true. There's already hybrids of this. I'm just gonna go ahead and let you know. Like they're talking about there's going to be hybrids of these roles that already exist. There's definitely already hybrids. Then they hand these uh, designs off to developers. Web application and website design involves UX designers and visual designers using their skill sets to make wireframes, mockups, design systems, color palettes, templates, and more to help developers build the product. Yes, I, I'll, I'll agree with that. I'm not going to read every single word on this blog post. I'm going to kind of start skimming through it and just kind of giving my, my overall opinion on it because I don't want to take too much time up here, but no code tools aren't a replacement for human expertise. That is the point that I wanted to make. Okay. So they already kind of like threw themselves under the bus on that one. No code doesn't mean you don't need coders. Well, obviously. Tools like Webflow or Airtable are meant to empower professionals to focus on the more specialized, complex things they are uniquely qualified to handle. So I think what they're trying to say is if you're a web designer and you don't know how to code, but you have the ability to design a website and you want to be able to design a simple website, Webflow is a solution for that, just like many other tools that have existed forever. Data engineers and coders, for instance, don't want to spend days writing API integrations. They want to work on more interesting and rewarding projects. Well, what's more interesting and rewarding than working on an API? <laughs> Tell me. And with employees working on projects they're uniquely qualified for, companies are more agile and can unlock new levels of productivity that ultimately give them an edge over their competitors, says Philip Seifert, a vice president at the venture capital firm Sapphire Ventures, who has what to do with any of this? Why is he being quoted? Who is this person? Did they use Webflow? Is that why you're quoting them? Oh, okay. This guy's clearly rich. You can tell. Yeah, I don't know. So benefits of no code tools. So I can already tell you the benefits of no code tools. You, I don't need this blog to tell me, but what do they say? Faster launches? Depends. Maybe. It depends on what you're building. Better tools. Better tools than JavaScript? Doesn't Webflow use JavaScript? Hmm, I don't know about that. Cost reduction, maybe, yes, I can see that. That is a real benefit of a CMS, cost reduction. You don't have to hire a web developer for six figures to do something. If you're just gonna build a simple website, you don't need all that. You don't need that custom functionality. You could use some basic level custom functionality that something like Webflow could provide. Easier testing, okay, that's interesting. What does that mean? Teams have more freedom to test their ideas now that they can build and modify their tools, websites, and other assets. And once a new insights are discovered, teams can quickly act or can act quickly and gain a competitive edge and try out the latest design trends. Sure. Okay. Ownership over the asset. What do you, companies that use no code tools will own assets they build instead of relying on technical partners and agencies. Unless you are the one that knows how to code or if you are hiring developers instead of just hiring a company that hires developers, says Webflow's co-founder co and CTO Brian Cho. Brian Cho? 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 And owning assets allows companies to experiment and come up with a bespoke design that stand out. Again, let's look at the title here. The title is Web Design versus Web Development. Neither will exist in 10 years. This is not a compelling article thus far, and I know that I'm being kind of harsh on this, and I am doing it for a reason. The reason is because Webflow is a CMS. They're claiming that they're changing the world and that web developers are going to be out of a job in 10 years or that there's going to be new jobs that web developers are going to have to change the whole way they think about web development because the CMSs are going to take over the world. This is a huge claim just to get people on their website and using their product so they can make more money. And I am I'm bashing them because of that reason alone. Turning designs into high quality code, high quality code. I've used Webflow and I'm just going to go ahead and say it's not high quality code. I'm sorry. I literally created something pretty simple. The reason why I did it is because I didn't want to write all the CSS for it. And I found a Webflow template that looked exactly the way that I wanted it to. I only used Webflow because I found a template and, and I used that template. And then I was looking at, into, you know, tweaking some of the things in the template and I was using the tool for that. And I'm not going to consider that high quality code. My, my bad to each their own web designer versus web developer. What lies in the future lies. <laughs> That's what lies in the future lies. As we improve and refine the tools we use to accomplish work, the actual work we do changes too. Yeah, I agree with that. Definitely. I think the, again, I, I've said this probably five times, the future of web development is going to change drastically. The internet for users and normal people across the world is going to change drastically. I am not denying that. It's just, I, I don't think it's going to be 
things like Webflow that are going to be controlling it because think about it, right? So let's just say hypothetically the internet goes VR, which I doubt is just going to go 100% VR, but it might go AR, VR. There's going to be different ways of using the internet that we haven't thought of yet. And it might be blockchain based and it might be this, that, and the other. You're telling me that your Webflow app is going to be able to keep up with all of those changes? No. You're going to need engineers that are going to create these new edgy websites. Webflow is not going to be able to create these new edgy websites in time. It's going to be far behind the times. Okay. Even the skills required of a web designer have evolved rapidly over the last decade. I agree with that. I, I work with web designers. I call them UX people, UX folks, and they use tools like Figma and things like Figma uh, and, and certain Adobe tools, et cetera, are pretty powerful. And it gets them closer to the developers because they can use and share libraries across. So like things like colors and fonts, and you can share these values across both the code and things like Figma. And it makes it really helpful helpful to standardize like a design language between the two. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Still waiting for the part where they say where it's going to, where web developers are not going to be a thing in 10 years or exist. Yeah. Um, keep up with the no code. Oh, that's it. That's it. That, that is it. <laughs> there wasn't a single thing in here that talked about. Okay. You know what? I I'm, I'm overly heated about something that's so silly, but just, I, I'm sorry, Misha Vaughn. Um, Poodle enthuse, you know, I'm not gonna roast you, but let's just read some of the comments here. When I see someone promulgating the no code movement as the veritable pan, pan, panacea for low skill business managers to be able to design and develop their own website, I immediately know this individual has no idea what they're talking about. Thank you, Duke Wellington. No code cookie cutter websites are perfectly fine for the local coffee shop ma or mom and pop restaurant. Thank you. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. However, if you are serious about building a full stack website with a three tier architecture, you simply cannot use a no code Wix like website. And he used the Wix reference like I did. Duke Wellington, we're on the same page. Anna Lee, nice information. That's a nice comment, Anna Lee. <laughs> Stephen Hall. What is the no code movement? I wish there was another way to say no code movement. Although Webflow is relatively easy to use, there's still a bunch of things the user needs to know to make sense. So that's also another thing I was saying is it's not really a no code movement, quote unquote. It's a less code movement because you can still write code and you actually kind of need to within Webflow if you want to make many changes. Anyway, that was my my short rant on this interesting blog post. If you are watching this on Twitch, thank you for being here. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. I am actually watching, I mean, uh, doing research right now to complete a, a video that I want to go over about the future of both the web and web development because I've been watching, let me switch uh, cameras here because I apparently have died. Apparently I died. I'm working on a video to go over the future of web development and this whole web 3.0 thing, because I'd started doing some research into the web 3.0 thing just to th see what people were talking about. And there's like videos with million, a million plus views or hundreds of thousands of views. And it is just, I get what they're saying, but it's just factually incorrect in many different ways. Not saying that some of the predictions that they're making is false. It's just that it's almost as if it's complete and utter pseudoscience. Yeah, so I it's kind of cringy to watch some of these videos. So I want to make my own video where I go over what I think Web 3.0 is from a more accurate perspective. But anyway, hope you all have a great one and I'll see you all later.